This is Nick with logosbynick.com and in today's tutorial I'll be showing you how you can use GIMP to create thumbnails for your YouTube videos using this very trendy style I see being used a lot here on YouTube by some pretty large YouTubers and I see a lot of them actually using Photoshop to do this and it's uh, completely unnecessary. You could very easily do this sort of design for your videos using GIMP and that's what I'll be showing you here. So uh, the first thing we're going to do in GIMP here is open up a new document. So I'm going to go to File, New. By the way, if you'd like to update GIMP's appearance with these new icons, I'll have a link to that information in the description of the video. Uh, we want to set up our document to be sized to what uh, YouTube wants a, a thumbnail size to be, which is 1280 by 720. So I'm just going to set the width and the height to 1280 by 720. Make sure that's in pixels. Go down to Advanced Options, and we're going to want Fill With Transparency. Go ahead and click OK. And I'm, actually, I'm just going to zoom out a little bit by holding control and rolling down the mouse wheel so we can see there's our template right there. And what I want to do now is grab an example image and use it for the thumbnail. This would be the image that you use for your thumbnails. The image I'm going to use is just an example. Uh, this is it right here. I grabbed this from, a, um, from Pixabay, which is a site for free stock photos. So if you'd like to use this photo just to follow along with the exercise, I'll link that in the description of the video. I'm going to right click that and open it with uh, GIMP. And I'll shrink out of that window. And now that I have this opened, I'm going to go to Edit, Copy, and I'll go to I'll go back to our uh, thumbnail template, and I'll go to Edit, Paste as New Layer. And de depending on whether or not the uh, your image is too big or too small for your uh, for your frame here, you might want to grab the scaling tool and click on the image and resize it down to fit the window if you have to do that. Uh, with this particular image, oops, let me paste that back in there. With this particular image, the width is already, whoops, the width is already 1280, so um, it fits nicely. I'm just going to grab the move tool and I'm just going to move it up a little bit. I'm going to hold control so it locks onto the uh, vertical axis. And we're doing that with the move tool and then. There we go, I have that set right there. So if you notice the image here, it's the same width as the thumbnail size, but it's a bit bigger in height. So I'm going to change that by going to uh, layer and layer to image size. And that's going to change that image so that it now fits the uh, the size of the window there. And I can go and close out of this now. And what I want to do now is I just want to right click on this layer and make sure there's an alpha channel here. If it's grayed out, you're good. But if it lets you click it, go ahead and click add alpha channel. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to separate the subject from the background because as you can see here, I cut him out and kind of put like a glowing effect around him. So to do that, I'm going to duplicate this layer by clicking the button that says create a duplicate, duplicate of the layer and add it to the image. And then I'll turn off the visibility of the original layer beneath it. And what I want to do is zoom in. You could use the zoom tool right here. I just like to hold control and roll up the mouse wheel. And to move the page around, you can just press the down on the mouse wheel and move the mouse. I'm going to zoom in over here to the beginning of the area that I want to crop out. And I'm going to grab the, uh, the paths tool. And I'm going to do this in very rudimentary fashion. I'm just going to go ahead and click and create points going around the edge of the, uh, the subject here that I'd like to crop out. And if you notice, I'm not sure if you could tell from, from how far zoomed in I am. This is uh, part of the chair and this is coming around the back of the collar of his shirt. And you'll see I'm just going to go around. I'm just going to go around and put points all around the edges of the subject here. And I'll go ahead and fast forward this so you don't have to sit here and watch me do this redundantly. Okay, so as you can see, I went around and put points going all around the subject here. So I've, I've, what I've done is I've taken the points outside of the frame of the image and just come around the outside here, back to the starting point. And what I want to do is close this path by holding control and clicking on that original point. And that's going to close it. And then we can press Enter on the keyboard to create a selection out of it. And let me zoom out a little bit. What I want to do now is go to Select, Invert, and then press Delete on the keyboard. And that's going to get rid of all of that. If you're using a Mac, you can just go to Edit and Clear right there. Uh, and after that, we can go to Select, None. And I'm just going to grab a different tool so it gets rid of those nodes. And you can see we've cropped the subject out of the background here. So I'm going to turn the visibility of the background back on. And I'll click on that actual layer. And I'm just going to go to Colors and Desaturate. And I'm just going to make that, we're going to give that like a black and white. We're going to make that black and white. Go ahead and click OK just so we could add a little bit of separation between the subject and the background. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create this 
white cutout effect going around the subject here. So to do that, let me click on the top layer here where the subject is. And I'm going to right click on that and go to um, add alpha channel. Well, not, not add alpha channel, alpha to selection. And that's going to create a selection going around the edge. And then I'll go to select uh, grow. And I'm going to grow this by 10 pixels. Hit OK. And that's going to create a, uh, a larger selection around the subject. And I want to place this layer beneath him. So I'm going to create a new layer. And we're going to want to use transparency. Go ahead and click OK. I'm going to click and drag this beneath the, uh, the subject right there. So this is layered beneath it. And by default, you should have black as your foreground color and white as your background color. With that being said, we can just go to Edit, Fill with Background Color. And it's going to fill that in with white. And what I want to do now is add like this glowing red color behind that. So what I'll do now is I'll grow that selection by 10 more. I'll go to Edit. No, I'll go to Select, Grow. And it's already set at 10. We can just click OK and create another layer. Click OK. And again, take this one and put it beneath the white cutout layer. And now we're going to change our foreground color to, the, to a shade of red. I'm going to use this FF002A. You can just use, you can use any color you'd like, really. Go ahead and click OK. And then go to Edit, Fill with Foreground Color. And now we can go to Select, None. And I'm going to press one on the keyboard to zoom back out to 100%. And now I'm going to give this a blur so that it, it gives you like that glowing effect here. I'll go to Filters, Blur, Gaussian Blur. And I want to choose uh, for this, it'll give you a little preview window, window here. We want to use something like a really high value here, like maybe like 150. And then we can go ahead and click OK. And if you don't like how that comes out, you can just undo it. Edit, undo, and try it again. Filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Maybe I'll go with something like 125. That's a little bit better. And what we'll do next is... I'm going to create like this yellow portion over here where you can put the text and where some of the uh, the background image sort of shows through. So to do that, I'm going to create another new layer. And I'll put this one beneath that red layer we just created. And I want to set the foreground color to a shade of yellow. The shade I'm using here is FFC22A. Go ahead and click OK. And then I just want to go to Edit, Fill with Foreground Color. And that's going to make the whole thing yellow. But what we could do now is come up here to where it says mode and change that to, uh, I believe, hard light, I think I used. Yes, hard light. And that'll show somewhat through. It depends. This really depends on like the type of image you're using and what color you're using as this. So you may want to try out different like uh, filters here. Well, not filters, different blend modes here. I think for this particular image in this shade, hard light worked pretty well. And you could even take the opacity and drop it down a little bit so it shows through a little more. And what I want to do now is I only want this applied to this bottom corner area like you see here on the original uh, design. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the Paths tool. I'm going to click to create a point right up here outside of the image. Then I'll come straight through over here like this and I'll create another point down here. And then I'll just finish the shape up going around the outside of the image. And then I'll hold Control and click on the original point to close the path. Press Enter to create a selection out of it. And then press Delete on the keyboard to get rid of it. Now we can go to Select None and grab the Move tool to get rid of those nodes. And as you can see, we're getting pretty close. The last step would be to add some text here. So to do that, uh, I'm going to grab, I'm actually going to click on the very top layer so the text gets added to the very top of the layering here. I'm going to grab the Text tool. I'm going to set the foreground color. Actually, you know what? I'm going to set this in the text menu. I'm going to set this color to black. Go ahead and click OK. And you could choose your font over here. I recommend choosing like a very thick heavyweight font because you're going to want people to be able to read your thumbnail when it's scaled down to small sizes, like when your videos show up in the in like the uh, the related video section. I recommend using a really thick heavyweight font. If you use something like a thin, brittle looking font, it's not going to really be legible. So I'm using Mon uh, Montserrat Ultra Bold here. That's a free font if you want to download that. Oops, did not mean to do that. And the size I'm using here, I'm just going to leave it at 44. This is not the default. I was just, that's the size I was using when I was planning this video. So I set it to 44. I'm just going to click on the canvas right here and I'm just going to type in how to design. And I'm going to grab the move tool. I'm just going to move this over right about here. And I'm just going to place the YouTube logo in here. You probably might not want to do this because you're, you're probably designing this for yourself and not 
for the same reason I'm designing this. So I'm just going to uh, copy this and paste it as a new layer. If you want to do this as well, if you just go to Google Images and type in YouTube logo PNG, it should be one of the first results. And you can just copy that and paste it into GIMP. I'm going to paste it as a new layer. Place that over here. I'm going to scale that down with the scaling tool. Hold control so it locks the proportions. And oops, let me grab that menu. Go ahead and click scale. And I'm just going to move this text over. I'm going to zoom in on this. I'm just going to move this text over so it's centered up with the uh, logo here. And what I want to do now is let me take this logo and put it beneath the text. I want to click on this text layer and I, and I want to duplicate that. So we get another one and I want to move this down here. Then I'll grab this text tool and I'll just write in here uh, thumbnails. Grab the move tool. I'll center this up over here. Move this over here. And I'd say that's looking pretty good. Uh, the next step now would be to add like a, uh, a white cutout effect to that and put like a little bit of a drop shadow beneath it so it helps it pop a little more off of the uh, the thumbnail. When you're creating thumbnails, you really want to create something that really pops and jumps off the screen to uh, so your your design grabs the attention of the viewer over the other videos that are displayed with yours. So that's uh, one thing to keep in mind. What I'm going to do is once I have once you have your text completed, I'm just going to right click on each of these layers and merge them down. I'm going to click on merge down and right click on that. Go to merge down because we want this all to be one layer like that. And I'm going to create a new layer. And I'll put this one beneath the text layer. And I want to right click on the text layer and go to alpha to selection. And again, it's going to create a selection going around the text. Let me click on the new layer and go to select grow. And I'm going to grow this one by five instead of 10. And then I'll go to edit fill with background color because that's set at white. And now I'm going to put a drop shadow beneath that. So I'll, add, I'll grow it again. I'll go to select. Actually, you know what? I won't grow it. I'll create a new layer. And I'll bring this one beneath. Actually, you know what? I'll bring this one to the top for now. And then I'm going to fill that with the foreground color, which is black. I'll go to edit, fill with foreground color. And we can go to select none. And I'm going to take this black uh, layer down here and just bring this down a little bit. Click and drag it down using the move tool. And then I will take this layer and bring it beneath the other two layers so it's layered beneath there. And again, I want to create uh, like a shadow effect. So I'll go back to filters, blur, Gaussian blur. For this one, we want to use much, much, much less than 125, maybe like something like 15. Go ahead and click OK. That's pretty good. I'm going to bring the opacity of that down a little bit. And again, I want to merge all these layers together. So I'll go to the top layer, right click it, go to merge down. Right click this layer, go to merge down. And now all of that text should be on one layer. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to rotate it a little bit, shift it around to give it a little bit of character. I'll grab the rotate tool, which is over here. And I'll just rotate this around a little bit, give it a little bit of a tilt. Click rotate, grab the move tool. And that's looking pretty good right there. So one last final step would be if you go to the original design for this video, you'll notice here the colors are a little different. Like this has like a little more, a little more of like a flat, sort of like an Instagram filter sort of look. And I think it looks pretty cool. I like how it looks with this design. So I'm going to show you how you do that if you want to do that as well. If not, then you're finished. You're pretty much done creating your design. But if you want to add that effect as well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the top layer. And then I'm going to right click on it and go to new from visible. And that's going to create an entirely new flattened layer using everything that's visible on the screen here. And with that, I can go to colors, curves, and I'm going to take this bottom node down here and just bring that up a little bit. And you're going to notice the image changing as you do this. Then I'll take this line down here and I'll just dip that down a little bit. And you could toggle the preview off and on to see the difference here. If you notice, it's lightening up the shadows a little bit. And once I've done that, I'll go to the blue channel. I'll increase the blue a little bit. And then I'll add some yellow to it just to balance it out. And now it's starting to come along. If you if you toggle the preview off and on, you can see there's clearly a difference there. Maybe I'll take some blue out of there. I don't want that much. And I'd say that looks pretty good. I'll go ahead and click OK to finalize that. And if you don't like how that looks, you could just toggle the visibility of it off. 
because that's an entirely different layer in and of itself. And once you're finished, you could just go to File and Export As, and you can export it as a .png or a .jpg, and you can use it as a thumbnail file for your videos. So that's how you can go about creating thumbnails for your YouTube videos using GIMP. If you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching. Thank you.